Greetings and God bless you in the wonderful name of our living Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bob Hagen with you today as uh, we once again get into God's wonderful matchless word on, uh, as he leads on the Uptime Church Network here. I'm privileged to be here. I'm honored to be here. I'm thankful for another day of life um, that the Lord has, has blessed us with here and uh, starting to cool down a little bit in the upper Midwest and and uh, you know, right around the corners, that that word that starts with the W. Uh, you know, when people talk about it being cold, uh, I don't know if they really know what cold is, unless they've ever been up here. Anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about God as being our awesome Father. He is awesome. Uh, there's um, a song that was done many years ago by uh, uh, the late Rich Mullins. Uh, awesome God. If you have an opportunity to uh, go on YouTube and listen to it, you should listen to that song. It's a wonderful song from a, a multi-talented man who's no longer with us. Uh, uh, a lot of a lot of good inspirational music that, that came from Rich and, and uh, I just exhort you to check his music out. I just uh, is one of the guys, uh, one of the old style uh, Christian artists back in the day of DeGarmo Key and Mar Mylon Lefebvre and people like that who really could put the music down and throw Carmen in there too. Can't forget Carmen, that's for sure. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 15 and we're going to start in verse 11. And this is known as the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, personally, I like to call it the parable of the forgiving father. And I'll show you as we go along why I really feel that that's, you know, it's my interpretation of it. And I don't think I'm discrediting it for any reason by doing that. In Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 11, and he said, and Jesus is speaking this parable, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, father, Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Uh, that's a key in here. He divided unto them. There were two sons. Both of the sons had a part in what the father gave them. Okay. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. Uh, that word for riotous living is living ruinously. It's um, he went out and uh, he had the money and he was partying and and uh, maybe drinking heavily. Was, I don't know what the you know. I guess in those days there's probably a lot of drinking and carousing and things like that that went on. He just lived totally contrary to how he'd been brought up. He decided that. I don't really want to be under the guise of anybody telling me what to do. I'm just going to go do my own thing. That's vernacular for today's things. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want, which he had never been in his entire life. He had never been in want. He had always had his needs met. Always. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, the lowest job that you could have in that society was to feed the pigs, feed the swine. So he went from having all his needs met to having nothing and actually having to go to feed the swines. Verse 16, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. See, no, no one cared for the guy. It was like you're you're feeding the pigs, you're feeding the swine. You're not even worthy to, why are we going to give to you? You know, he had no friends, in other words. He was a man without a country. He was there. He, it's just, he was completely alone, without hope, without God in the world, okay? And when he came to himself, he said, self, you're talking to yourself. How many hired servants of my father's? have bread enough to eat. I have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger. 
I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Indicates to me that his upbringing was an upbringing where the father brought him up correctly. He brought him up to um, have respect for his father, to have respect for his mother and his, his family. But he just decided to go the other way. He decided to walk away. You hear about that happening with many uh, supposed ex-Christians that, that you know, they, they, they're saved, they make beautiful music, and then at some point in their lives, they just turn and they go the opposite direction. They still claim to be uh, following the truth, but that's, they're just not doing that anymore. And he says, and I'm no, worthy, no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So he had decided in his heart already, he had decided, okay, I'm going to go home. And I, I know my dad, I know how, what a wonderful guy he is. And he, he's, he's going to take me back, but I'm not worthy anymore to be his son. I'll just, I'll be a hired servant. I'll, I'll, I'll do all the stuff that the servants do just so I can be back in the family. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Okay, and I'm going to interject an Oriental custom here. Orientalism, if you will. When the head of a family was waiting for a visitor or somebody that he was expecting, there would always be a servant that would be watching to see if uh, the man was coming. Yet every day this father was out there uh, expecting, looking for his son to return. And then it says when he came, he ran on, he ran to him and he embraced him and he kissed him. He welcomed him back. He never said to him, you know, you blew it. You're fortunate that I'm even here to give you a piece of bread and a drink of water. No, he didn't do that. He was expecting him to come back. This is, this is so much like what our Heavenly Father is doing right now. There's people that are watching this that have no relationship with God or the Lord Jesus Christ. And they think, well, I've done too many things that are too rotten. There's, you know, you don't know what I've done in my life. There's no possible way God could forgive me. Look, that's not the truth. He forgave me and continues to forgive me. Um, by the grace of God, uh, I sit here and I do this teaching from his word. Uh, my heart is full of love for people. Um, I want my life to matter. And, and for so many years, it didn't matter. And, and I always haven't walked according to the word, but God has always been faithful to me. So let's continue on here in, in Luke chapter 15. And the son, okay, down, let's see. And the son said unto the father, Father, I've sinned against heaven in my sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Okay, the sandals and the ring were an indication that he was a free man. And it's kind of an interesting thing because he was a free man before he left and went into sin. And what did he become? He became a slave to his passions, his sin, his desires that were wrong. But when he came back, the father brought forth the best robe, uh, the signet ring, which is an indication that, you know, hey, you're my son. You know, um, you're not a servant. You're a son. This is a very important thing, especially when we get to the realization that Jesus 
Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Okay. And he brought in verse 23 and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. And he called one of his servants. Now, no, excuse me, in verse 25. Now the elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said, thy brother has come, my father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And his brother was happy that his, his brother came back. No, it wasn't happy at all. He was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. His father came out and said, uh, look, Sam, what's going on? You know, you should be happy that your brother's back. What's the deal? He answered and said to his father, lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son, as soon as thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, son, thou art ever with me, all that I have is thine. Okay, you think about that now. It was meet that we should be merry and be glad for this brother. This thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Okay, now why, why am I doing this today? Because I really believe that we're to the point now in uh, history of the world where the father is anxiously waiting for the return of his children. There's many out there that will be hearing this side. I don't know how many eventually will watch this, but there are people that are that will be watching this that are lost. They have no hope you know, without God in the world. They don't believe in a, a all-powerful creator. They don't believe that he uh, sent his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came and lived and uh, laid down his life for us and was in the grave for three days and rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Excuse me, it makes intercession for us. They don't believe any of these things. But what I'm here to tell you is that there is a God that loves you, uh, a Lord Jesus Christ who loves you and continues to make intercession on a daily basis at the right hand of the Father. Uh, you need to uh, go to the Lord and just, like I've said so many times on here before in the different forums we've had, you need to give Jesus Christ a chance. Um, I tried other things. Uh, they, they just, they didn't fill the void. Um, your life is not just going to be a bed of roses. It's not going to be without problems and different things that are going to come up. There's going to be situations that come up. There's going to be uh, loved ones who, who get sick, but we can pray for them. Um, that's one of the tools that our Father has given us. Uh, I, I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so you have the ability to pray in the spirit if you've had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can pray with your understanding, uh, but they're just the bottom line is that your life does matter. It's not uh, it's not a throwaway situation. You know, there are people that just don't want to believe that they're worth anything anymore. Um, I've had those thoughts before too. That uh, how come I'm going through this and why am I having to deal with that? But as long as we have breath in our bodies, we should be praising the Lord. Okay. All right, now what I want to do is I want to go to Ephesians chapter 2, and I want to cover a little section here about, this is in the, of course, in the church epistles. And this is kind of a, explains a little bit about what we used to be like uh, before the grace of God visited our lives. Okay. 
And you hath he quickened, the word quickened means made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And stop right there. Okay. We're the, we're the children of wrath at one point. We are not the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience are the ones who have willfully gone the other way, have have kicked God out of their lives, have nothing to do with them. People who are uh, Luciferians, uh, they worship Satan. Um, people that uh, come, a man comes to mind who's turned his life around years ago, John Ramirez, um, was a uh, actually a very heavily involved in the occult, and now he's a, um, a great minister of the gospel and bringing people out of that mess. Okay, now we go to verse four. But God, who is rich in mercy, it doesn't say he's poor. It doesn't say he just has a little mercy. It says he's rich in mercy. For his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, spiritually, we're seated together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus, even as we're down here on earth doing this. And in the ages to come, he ages, it's going to take ages for him to show us the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, his poema, his masterpiece. Okay? Poema, it's a great one. Uh, created in Christ Jesus for good works, uh, excuse me, unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens, uh-oh, here we go, from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Okay. You're not being made nigh by the blood of Christ. At one point, we had no hope without God in the world. For we are, um, excuse me, for, for he is our peace, Jesus Christ, who hath made both one, Jews and Gentiles, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself twain one new man, so making peace. So we started off, we were dead in trespasses and sins, without God and without hope in the world. But even when we were enemies of God, what did he do? He saved us. Jesus Christ came. You know, he says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father except by me. And there's no other name named under heaven where among men were or we must be saved in Acts 4.12. Uh, in Titus, it says, uh, God cannot lie. Um, either the word of God is truth, or it's not the truth. And if it is the truth, which we believe it is, then I really believe it's time to get right with the Lord. Uh, the word saved means to be made whole. You know, it's, it's a lot of times it's an overused phrase, maybe. And I don't, I'm not saying that to demean it. It's a wonderful word. But it's word sozo, which means to be made whole. Okay, if we need to be made whole, then we're broken, perhaps. You know, if something's broken, don't you don't you want to fix it? I had to I had to fix my uh, my wife's elliptical uh, Nordic track thing. We got the part and I fixed it. And I could have left it like that, but it was broken. It needed to be fixed. And I, I kind of think that that's, 
you know, the Lord looks down and he says, okay, Hagen's broken. No, he doesn't really, he's an enemy of mine, but I know his heart is to know me. And so things happened and I became a believer. I became a son of God. The word of God says in Romans 8, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. You're an heir of God when you're born again in God's spirit. You're a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Oh, no, that can't be. That sounds like blasphemy. That's what it says in Romans 8. Do we, do we walk like we're heirs of God? Do we walk like we're joint heirs with Christ Jesus? Most of the time, no. But we should. You know. <laughs> and uh, why don't we go now to uh, Romans chapter 5. I get a little, I get a little yakky at times when I do these. I just get, I get excited sometimes. Kind of, it's a good thing to be excited about because this is life. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, in Romans chapter five, we're going to read, we're going to be, be reading down through a few verses here. Right? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Just think about that for a second, folks. We have peace. That's the absolute end of enmity. That's peace. You know, it's just, you, you got a war and the war ends and there's peace. And then people join together and they, they do things to construct, not destruct. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory of God. It says in the grace wherein we stand, it's an act that we have to do. We have to stand in it. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Oh, that means every time something bad happens, we're supposed to be thanking God for it. It's going to happen. Things are happening in our lives. But it says knowing that tribulation works patience which is something I need to work on. I'm sure none of the rest of you do, but I do. And patience, experience, and experience hope. And listen to this scripture. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad. It's flooded in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. And here we go again. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Okay, he died for the ungodly. That was me. I was ungodly. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, you're ungodly. I'm being too blunt today, aren't I? Well, so be it. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man would some even dare to die. And listen to this. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Did he have to? He's, he did not have to do this, folks. He could have said, you know, I don't want to go through this. He knew that he was going to be beaten. His trial was going to be a sham and he was going to be nailed to a tree and beaten worse than any man has ever been beaten in the history of the world. Yet his, none of his bones were broken. You talk about a man's man. Oh my goodness. In verse nine, much more than, excuse me, much more than being now justified by his blood, we are saved from wrath through him. For when, if when we were enemies, were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we, best, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement or the at one that we're one with God again. Okay. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, Adam, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but law is not imputed where there is no, I mean, sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who was a figure of him that was to come, Jesus Christ, he talking about. But not as the offense, also, so also is the free gift. We're almost done here. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, the offense of Adam, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not, not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, 
but the free gift is of many offenses under justification. And finally, for if one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. This section right here in Romans chapter 5 is so fantastic. I mean, it's, it, you know, we, we've already been through Ephesians and we've seen how we were without God and without hope in the world. God is, is so awesome. Our awesome Father, that that when we were dead in trespasses and sins, He sent Jesus Christ to come and to live His life. And a thousand, two thousand years later, we're still talking about the man Jesus Christ, who came and He laid down His life. He laid down His life for you and for me. He laid down His life for the the worst sinners. You know, he, he just didn't, he didn't come and, and say, okay, I, um, you know, I've come that they might have life. And then there's a little asterisk there and it says, unless you have committed these sins, in, in which case you're not going to be included in the covering, the blood covering that I did, that, that covenant that was accepted to the father once for all. It talks about in Hebrews where they had to do the sacrifices on a yearly basis. You know, just to cover the just to cover the sins of the people. But Jesus Christ came so he could take care of that at one time, and then he was the only one that had the right to say it is finished. What was finished? Salvation. The reconnection that had been broken between God and man was once again reconnected. I know a lot of people don't believe this. They say, Well, you gotta work for you know, and then and then at some point. If you endure to the end, you'll find out if you're going to be saved. No. That Holy Spirit, that gift that God gives when you're born again of his spirit uh, is a token. We talk about this on uptime all the time. It's a token. It's a seal. We've been sealed. It's like that signet ring. It's like God gave me, gives you a signet ring that says, Son of God with all power. He wants you to be you want your life to be blessed. It's not going to always, you know, take my yoke upon you. A yoke is easy. My burden is light. Wouldn't you like to be yoked together with the Lord Jesus Christ? And, and you know, you're yoked together with him. And when you have a burden, you can go to him. And um, it's not like calling somebody and they're, they're not home. You know, and he's, it's 24-7, 365 days a year availability access to god you don't have to go through um you don't have to go through priests and, and please uh, i i don't want to uh, offend anybody uh, because actually one of my dearest friends is a priest and i love the guy dearly but i i don't have to go through him to confess my sins so that i'm right with god um it's a very important step to take. Uh, it's the reason why uptime is on here is to bring people back to the Father, our awesome Father. Um, he's just waiting uh, to run out and to um, fall on your neck and embrace you and bring you home. And you're not going to be a servant. You're going to be a son. You're going to be at that table uh, eating the best food and having the best drink and just, just having your life super blessed. So what I'd like to do is uh, go to Psalm 119. I've got four verses and then we're going to wrap this up. But uh, my prayer is that you would give Jesus Christ a chance. Um, maybe go into the 14th chapter of the book of John. Read that. Also read the 8th chapter of the book of John. Um, uh, there's no other way, folks. Um it's not being closed-minded. It's the truth. And when you go to the Word of God and you start reading it and you open your heart to the Lord, you're going to understand that He's waiting for you. And He's not waiting to cream you with a baseball bat. He's waiting to embrace you like He did when um, there's a story in the Gospels about a leper. And He says He 
he touched the leper and the leper was cleansed. And I was thinking about it when I was reading that a while back. You know, I bet you that was the first time that anyone had ever touched that man. And in some of the older texts uh, that the Bible was translated from, the word touch means hugged. So can you imagine being hugged by Jesus? I, I'm looking forward to that day to be hugged by Jesus. And this man was healed. <laughs> so my prayer is that Jesus hugs you with his love. Okay. Okay. Psalm 119 and verse 129. I told you, so this is the way I get sometimes. These are wonderful scriptures. And, uh, psalm 119 is what's known as an acrostic psalm. And the word of God is used in every verse. But these are these are excellent verses down in 129. Thy testimonies or thy words are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It gives understanding unto the simple. Hey, that means me. I'm simple. Yeah, can I understand this? Sure. I opened my mouth and panted for. I longed for thy commandments. Look upon me and be merciful unto me as thou used to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word and let not iniquity have dominion over me. So his testimonies are wonderful. The entrance of his words gives light. And you can thank God for ordering your steps in his word by making Jesus Christ Lord in your life. And uh, it's a pretty simple thing. You just, you know, Father, show me, and I need you, and, uh, you know, I know I've fallen short, but I certainly, uh, it's not a sign of weakness. It's not a crutch, which a lot of people say. It's a um, solid foundation in this world, and especially with what's going on around us right now. I'm not, you know, I could, I could have gone off on a, a long diatribe about everything that's that's happening in different parts of the world but you know what it, the most important thing right now is that the people uh, get ready for the return of the lord jesus christ and that they're right with god so father i thank you for the day i thank you for the truth that you are an awesome god and i thank you that you're waiting for us to come home to you thank you for blessing the folks that will be watching this our blessing Greg for being such a great brother in the Lord and his family. And I thank you for this upcoming week being a wonderful week and many will turn back to you. So I thank you in the name of our wonderful Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll catch you on down the road. God bless you.